The previous video set up second order constant coefficient linear differential equations, or SOCLDs as you could say, and it gave the fundamental interpretation as harmonic motion and solved the homogeneous case. Now I want to move on to a non-homogeneous system. There are two main approaches. This video will teach an approach called undetermined coefficients, and a future video will teach a second approach called variation of parameters. Let me recap. This is the linear operator for a second order constant coefficient linear differential equation. A, B, and C are constants, and all those constants are positive if I want to interpret this as harmonic motion. The homogeneous system is Ly equals zero. It is solved by some homogeneous solution Yh, which is always the linear combination of two linearly independent solutions Y1 and Y2. These are found with the characteristic equation and will be exponentials or exponentials combined with trig functions. Now I want the non-homogeneous system, a harmonic system with an external force pushing the system. I expect a solution will be, which will be a particular solution, yp, plus the previous homogeneous solution. So given a forcing term, I need to find this particular solution, yp, and then I will be done if I know the homogeneous solution. The question is then, how does the particular solution relate to the forcing term? What kind of solution does the forcing term produce? For certain nice functions, I can assume the particular function solution will resemble the forcing term. And this sort of makes sense. In a system, once its natural oscillations have decayed, the forcing term can make the system move basically in the direction of the forcing. The particular solution will match up at least roughly with the forcing function. This leads to the method of undetermined coefficients. This works for any forcing term, which is an exponential, e to the at, a power, t to the n, or a sine or a cosine function, or any product of these three. This table gives the setup for guessing the matching particular solution. And this table is pretty complicated, but the logic is actually pretty clean. We just guess the same type of function. If the forcing is an exponential, will you guess the same exponential? There will be some unknown constant c in front, but it will be the same e to the at. If the force is a power, we'll guess a polynomial of the same degree. This will produce many unknown constants ci, the coefficients of the polynomial. If the force is sine or cosine, guess some combination of sine and cosine with unknown coefficients c and d. And the rest of this table is more complicated versions of the same idea. Guess the same kind of function. All these guesses have unknown constants in them. These unknown constants are the undetermined coefficients that give the methods its name. Finding the particular solution just boils down to determining these undetermined coefficients. This is best seen, seen by example, so let me do one. Here is a non-homogeneous SOCLD. I have initial conditions, which I'll use at the end to determine a unique solution. First, I write the characteristic equation. This quadratic has real roots r equals 1 and r equals 2, so the homogeneous solution is a linear combination of e to the 2t and e to the t. I'll put the homogeneous solution aside for a moment. The forcing term is just t, so the particular solution should be a polynomial of degree 1, ct plus d. C and D are the undetermined coefficients. How do I find the values of C and D? Well, I just put it all back in the equation. Here are the derivatives of the particular solution. I replace the three terms in the DE, y, y prime, y double prime, which results in this equation. Then I'll group the equation with coefficients of T, including bringing the T from the left over, and constant coefficients. Then, for this to equal zero, both of the terms in brackets must be zero, and this gives two equations. I now have a linear system of two equations in two variables. I can solve this system. For the linear systems, I don't need to see the work. Solving them using a computer, using matrices, if you know linear algebra, whatever you wish to do. And I'm not going to show the steps to solve these systems. I'll have asked a computer or done them off on the side if they're fairly easy. This one is solved by c equals 1 half and d equals 3 quarters. This setup will always happen. 
Putting the guess for yp in the equation and isolating the terms will give a linear system, and that linear system will always have a unique solution. This is essentially reduced a DE, which is hard to solve, to a system of linear equations, which is easy to solve. So now I have the particular solution and the homogeneous solution. I put them together for the full solution. Now I can return to the initial conditions. I still have A and B as unknowns. These were the pieces of the homogeneous solution. The initial conditions give values for y of 0 and y prime of 0. Well, if I put 0 into the solution, I get this expression, and this must be equal to 3 quarters according to the initial condition, which leads to the equation a equals negative b. Then if I calculate the derivative and evaluate at 0, I get this equation, which leads to the equation 2a plus b minus 1 equals 0. Again, I have a linear system of two equations in two variables, and this is solved by a equals 1 and b equals negative 1. And finally, I can put it all together. This is the unique function that solves the DE with the initial conditions as given.